<laughs> but first, <laughs> we've got guy. the very latest on the Michael Jackson manslaughter trial, where on Wednesday, a cardiologist who received his medical treatment testified that Jackson could have been saved if Dr. Conrad Murray had not made several mistakes. All those deviations, giving propofol, giving propofol in an unmonitored setting without personnel, without appropriate monitoring, without the appropriate equipment, not being prepared, not doing appropri appropriately reacting to the arrest, not calling 911 on a timely fashion, all directly impact, impacted his, his uh, life. Because if these deviations would not have happened, Mr. Jackson would have been alive. Also on Wednesday, Murray's lawyers dropped a claim made earlier that Jackson swallowed a fatal dose of propofol on his own. Joining us now is Jean Katsaris, a correspondent for In Session on True TV. And she's been in the courtroom every day of this trial. Jean, good to have you with us this morning. Good Thank morning, you. first of all. Good uh, morning. How stunning a revelation to hear this doctor testify uh, that he could have been saved had the proper care been administered. You know, it was amazing. It was quite a day for the prosecution yesterday. And so many gross deviations from the standard of care. That was the terminology. But one by one, talking about what Conrad Murray did not do and what he did in that bedroom that ultimately helped cause the death of Michael Jackson. But I think the most emotional one. And remember, Catherine and Joe Jackson, a mother and a father, are sitting in that courtroom and they hear that because 911 wasn't called in that small window of time, that Michael Jackson's life could be saved because his airways were obstructed. He couldn't get oxygen. And if they had gotten emergency personnel to get him oxygen, he'd be alive today. And that's very strong for the prosecution. And Catherine and Joe Jackson just sat, and I saw Joe Jackson hang his head at points in that courtroom. Let's talk about kind of the, the reversal in strategy that you had mentioned earlier, that the, uh, the judge and the prosecution, they're n actually not going to try to prove that, he, that Michael Jackson killed himself by drinking the propofol. This, this whole kind of, this reversal here, why, uh, why first of all, and, and what does this mean? Well, believe it or not, there was a study in Chile since Michael Jackson died. It was a human study. Now, we would never do this in the United States, but students volunteered to drink propofol. And they were given substantial amounts. And the, the issue was, will you die if you drink propofol? Well, they all lived. And originally, I think it was just a phone call from Chile. Hey, we've had some students. They've ingested propofol. They've all lived. But it's been developed into a paper. It's been published. It's been peer-reviewed. And it's actually going to be presented at the National Association of Anesthesiologists in Chicago on Friday. And the defense expert is agreeing with it. And the defense said, we conducted our own study. You do not die from drinking propofol. But let, let's look at the other side here. Conrad Murray is saying, I didn't put all those drugs in Michael Jackson. I put some of them, yes, but not everything that the toxicology report showed. And Michael Jackson's not here. He can't tell us what he may have done. So the defense was trying to figure out how the other drugs got in him. But the way they're going to go, there was a syringe found on the nightstand, a needle found yeah. on the floor. They're going to say that Michael injected himself. With the jury, though, just real quickly, the jury's probably going to look at this a little strange, though, to see the defense change course like this, right? I got about 10 seconds. The jury knows nothing about what the original uh, position of the defense was. Got it. Okay. Gene Caceres, thanks so much. We appreciate it. You're Good welcome. to see you this morning.